Hi, welcome back to Stock Talk. This is Joe Rabel from Rabel Stock Research. And uh, what I want to do today is go a little bit deeper uh, during the lesson into multiple time frames and explain how to use the upper time frame. So uh, typically the types of patterns I identify uh, and show examples of have been two time frames, a pullback trade or breakout trade on a specific time frame that would be the trend time frame or the trade time frame and then a lower time frame would be the trigger time frame uh, what i want to do now is actually add in an upper time frame so uh, let's go ahead and get into the agenda uh, again i just want to keep adding layers to uh, this analysis because um, the more time frames you use in any stock pick that you or a stock uh, analysis that you're doing, uh, I think is gonna improve the overall picture for you. And you're gonna be able to see things a little bit more clearly. So I wanna make sure I add in this upper time frame, which I think can be very helpful at avoiding some certain bad trades. So um, what I'm giving an example, uh, if I wanna trade off the daily chart, I'm looking for a pullback to a rising 18 on the daily chart, and I'm gonna trigger off the hourly then I'm going to go to the weekly, in this case, the upper time frame, and just make sure I'm not doing anything stupid. So uh, that's really what I'm uh, trying to avoid is it, it really what it does is it help me to avoid bad trades. Um, so that's what I mean, but I'm saying looking up. If I'm on a daily chart, I want to look up to the weekly. If I'm looking at a trade off the weekly, I want to look up to the monthly and make sure uh, there's no real interference to the trade. Um, so I'm going to cover a couple examples of things that you want to avoid, and then we're going to go through the stock picks that came through this week. Uh, please send in those stock requests. Um, I know we started out the new year, got some requests. Uh, it definitely slowed down this week. Um, so uh, I have enough for the show, but I'd love to get a lot more uh, people sending in requests. Uh, and when you get a chance, go ahead and just fire over a couple symbols at stocktalk at stockcharts.com. Uh, before I get into the lesson, let me just tell you my, res my uh, research can be found at rabelstockresearch.com. I send out about two to three reports each week uh, trying to identify attractive patterns. I look through thousands of charts each week um, and I try and narrow it down to a select few. And then also uh, I go through the indices and the sectors to try and decipher when uh, the environment is more attractive and maybe when it's a little less desirable. Um, if you're interested in the service and you want to give it a try, uh, you can use a, a coupon code STOCKTALK and uh, if you do that, you'll get the first two months for $50. Let's go ahead and get into this, um, this lesson. And so um, I want to give this example, and I'm going to use the 18MA right now. Um, I'm going to show you a few other things you can do besides the moving average uh, that I believe can have an impact on in terms of using this upper time frame. But there's a couple things we definitely want avo to avoid uh, when we're trading. So just to give you an example, if, if I'm looking at a weekly chart and I've got a stock that's pulling back on the weekly and it looks kind of attractive and I want to play it for a move and I'm thinking based on the ADX and the MACD that it's it's a trend play not necessarily a quick trade for just a couple days but something you want to trade and be in maybe for uh, several weeks or something like that um, in that case you want to go up to the upper time frame so the time frame above so if this is happening on a weekly chart you want to go and look at the monthly 18 ma and if you're running into if if the 18 ma is coming down like this right above your trade and it really limits the potential that you have in terms of upside then uh and, and let's say the trigger on the weekly or the daily is showing up here with an 18 ma going to the downside right above you uh, we really don't want to do this trade. I mean, we're fighting the trend on the upper time frame, and this is a very strong line. So we don't want to. We want to stay away from that kind of a trade. The second thing you want to avoid, I think, is when you get really extended away on the upper time frame. Like I said, I'm going to show you a couple of examples in a second, but I wanted to just give you kind of a graphic look when we get really far away from the 18 month. The risk of a pullback 
starts to increase. And it really, I think, um, uh, makes the uh, probabilities of taking a trade, even off the daily chart, um, to be a little bit more, I think, increases the risk. Um, let's go ahead and look at a few examples. So I've got this Cloudflare NET, and I want to zero in on this area here where the stock gets really extended. And notice we had a pullback trade. Um, at that point, the ADX was pretty strong. Um, we still had a rising 18. Uh, we had a rising 40. Um, yeah, it started to separate a little bit, but this could be construed as a pullback trade. MACD really wasn't diverging at this point, so we could consider this. And so I would use, the way I would go about doing that is I would come, I would look at this as my trend time frame, and then I would go down to the hourly chart uh, to trigger myself in somewhere in this zone here as it's starting to turn up. I'd get a trigger on the hourly to trade it back to the upside. And what I'm, I guess what I'm trying to point out is if I'm looking at this, I don't want to do this and not look at where I am on the upper time frame. In this case, I'm extended above the 18 on the weekly chart. So if I'm looking to play a pullback trade and I want to do this uh, pattern and I'm going to trigger in here and I know I'm already really stretched away on the weekly chart. I'm just going to avoid this. I just I don't want to play stocks that are, are that have a significant amount of upside or uh, pullback risk on the upper time frame. Um, the next thing I want to look at is actually the opposite of that. So instead of being extended, uh, we've got a situation where the upper time frame has a declining 18 that's acting as resistance. So I'm going to show you a few examples. So look at this undercut, see this undercut, and then we get a rally here and we get a pinch that develops. Now, it's a pretty aggressive trade, but it does meet the qualifications. Um, and if you draw in your downtrend line here, you could be looking at this as a one, two, three potential. Um, but the problem is the upside is so limited by the 18 on the uh, on the higher time frame, the 18 is rolling over. I know I've only got room to about 350. So if I'm going to play this, I've really only got a couple of uh, days worth of upside. And I don't really like to play that way. I want to play stocks that don't have a lot of interference to the upside. So in this case, I had price resistance um, and I also had uh, resistance from the moving average. So I don't want to avoid those. I'm going to look at the upper time frame and what the upper time frame is doing in a lot of cases is framing out the trade. It's telling me what my potential upside is, where my support levels are and what the trend look like. I mean, what the uh, trend moving averages on the upper time frames are telling me where resistance could be coming in. Now, if you look at this, notice this move, we had another undercut and then another rally up and another pullback to the 18, another pinch. And this time it happened as the uh, MACD was crossing above the zero line. But again, we had another move where we had very limited uh, upside based on the declining 18. Yeah, it ended up pushing up into resistance before turning down. But you would have had to have been very, very nimble to make money in this. Um, and, uh, you know, it could be done. I'm not saying you can't do it, but I would prefer to find stocks that don't have this kind of interference on the upper time frame. So uh, anyway, I thought this was a helpful uh, little session just to make sure uh, you get a better idea of how I'd go about using one more, uh, one additional uh, time frame when I'm doing my multiple time frame analysis. Let's go ahead and get into the individual stocks and uh, do some analysis right now. Okay, the first stock I've got is Coupa Software. Um, I want to look up in this upper left. So in this uh, layout, I've got the uh, weekly chart with a zigzag, an 18-week, and I've overlaid an 18-month line, which is in the form of a 72-week. It's the same thing as, as an 18-month. It basically play, uh, calculates out the same way. And then I've got relative strength down at the bottom. But what I wanted to focus in on here is notice when this moved up, and we started to see the 18 week get away from the 18 month, but look at where it starts to separate here. And we got some separation there. And then we have price separated away from the 18 week. So we got price separated away from, separated away from the 18 week. 
and we have the 18 weeks separated away from the 18 month line. So when you see that, you can expect some kind of a retracement back. Uh, the, when you get too far away from the 18 on any time frame, it sort of acts as a leash and pulls it back down. Uh, so notice where we are right now. We've got the 18 month here and we've, we've gotten some separation between the 18 week and the 18 month. And now price is separated away from the 18 week. Now, I mean, this is an aggressive kind of a look to pl try and play this back for a rally. But just like I was talking about using the higher time frame, in this case, I'd be using the weekly as my upper time frame and saying, this is kind of how much room I have. Essentially, right now, it's up to 200. That's if we got a sharp rally to the upside. But what I don't have is I don't I'll look at the daily chart and notice this 18. So we had divergence that we could have played for a rally back to the 18, but that's about it so far. If we can actually get price to get above the 18 and then pull back to the 18 with this cupping around, then we might be able to play for a move up towards this 18 week line. So that would be the only way I'd really consider playing that. And we'd probably get another pinch play on a move back up through and holding the 18 on that pinch. So that would, and you'd also have a one, two, three sequence developing. So that, that would be the only way I'd be willing to play this right now. Yes, it's oversold. Yes, we're getting into support, but we have a lot of momentum to the downside. Look at this uh, 18, uh, the uh, ADX on the, uh, weekly chart, pretty good volume selling, uh, pretty good strength in the sellers. Yeah, we're due a bounce, but that's probably about it for now. Um, ETSY, Etsy. So uh, this is symptomatic of what we've been seeing in some of these stocks, these uh, consumer discretionary and some tech stocks. Notice the selling off the peak, how violent it was. Um, let's just zero in on the weekly. Look at the big, huge bar, and then it kind of paused. Had a little follow through, then pause, and then another big bar. I mean, that's pretty ferocious selling. Um, I think there's a lot of damage done to this chart. I think your best case scenario is this starts to find support, you know, down in this zone down here, and then bounces up and probably has resistance somewhere, you know, somewhere in this area. Could be as low as 210. Um, and maybe form a range, uh, something like that. But I, I just, it's not a stock that I would be focusing my efforts on right now just because of the violence of the decline. Looks like we're breaking the 18 month, a violent break of the 18 and the 40 week. There's no setup here. Even though the ADX was good going into this, the retracement was way too hard. Uh, let's look at Lulu. So this is a similar situation, um, not quite as violent, and we're, we're coming into the 18-month line. So in this case, I don't know that I would consider this an official break of the 18-month. Um, we've had two pretty big down bars. We're coming into some price support. Um, but yeah, I, it, it doesn't. I'm not attracted to this pullback. It's too violent, and it, it, we just slid through the 18 and the 40 week like they weren't even there. And this is the big thing. This is why we go down to the smaller time frames. So we want to look at multiple time frames because we want to not only evaluate the trend in each time frame, but also the momentum. And look at the momentum, and look at this is a red di popping up like on this decline. So that's pretty good strength in the sellers. We can go back quite a while. Wow, and we haven't had that kind of strength in the sellers. Um, I do think there's some price support, so I don't know that this is just going to fall apart. But in terms of looking for a buying chance, unless you're going to try and trade for small moves and little retracements, that's pretty much all you've got right now until this stabilizes. Um, Morgan Stanley. So uh, I kind of like the way this is marking time. Um, notice, notice how we got a big move to the upside and instead of pulling back deep, it's just kind of working sideways and the moving average and the uh, MACD is actually pulling back while price is working sideways. So, and ADX is doing the same thing. ADX has gotten down to 16 um, and price is just, again, just kind of consolidating in a, in a sideways fashion. So it's, there's two ways to work off an overbought condition. One is by pulling back and the other is by working sideways. In this case, it looks like it's working sideways. The missing component for me right now is that I typically I'm looking for these moving averages to come together. They don't have to crisscross, but they should come together while this is moving sideways. And that tells me that this might be ready for its next leg. So I think this needs a little bit more time, but I am attracted to the way there's no sign of distribution. There's no sellers in this during this consolidation phase. Uh, Pegasus Systems. 
So now we go into some technology. I mentioned the Coupa. Look at this software stock. Um, not the kind of pullback. So I talk about this in my book. I don't really like to buy um, bad weakness, okay? I'm looking for good weakness. Good weakness is when you pull back to a rising 18 months. So this looks like it's breaking down on this time frame, but you're pulling back to major support based on the 18 month. But look at what's happening here. This is the 18 month line. We're violently breaking the 18 month. Yeah, we could get a bounce off the 40 month and rally into resistance, but I think that's all we've got. We've coming into support here. There could be a short-term trade coming back up, um, back towards the 18-week line, but that's about all you're gonna get. You gotta be very nimble, and I, I really would probably avoid the ones that are showing such strength in ADX. This ADX line is rising based on the sellers. It's at 33 and rising. Pretty strong condition on the downside. Um, like I said, it could get a bounce in the near term. Walmart. So Walmart got very overbought on the monthly chart here, got separated away from its 18 month line. And then it has spent over a year now working its way back. Um, actually, the MACD still hasn't come back that much, but it has worked off some of it. And the ADX, which was way up overdone here, has worked its way back to 25. So we're in a position where this could get going again. Now, when I see this pattern and I'm pulling back to the 18 month, I want to go down to the weekly chart and see if there's any patterns developing. And the first thing I see is a low ADX condition that's been low for quite some time. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw a trend line. Um, I could draw the trend line off this here. So really something along these lines. I'm looking for some strength coming up through 150. Um, I'd love to see some volume associated with that. And I'd really like to see green DI pop when that happens. So that's really what I'd be looking for. I don't think I would play a move off the daily. So if we get some kind of a signal off the daily, I don't think I want to do that. I don't think there's enough room to really play. Let's get through this 150, 152 area and really break out. And then you could get a whole nother leg to the upside. Archer Daniel. So, uh, when this was uh, brought up to me, it was I might have been four or five days ago as a uh, request. It was it, it was a little bit closer to the breakout area, so I see why he was bringing this up. So my issue isn't I like the stock, I like the overall pattern. Let's just start with the monthly. Look at the monthly strength here. Look at how this was a pinch play on the monthly, and then we got the pullback. And instead of getting the opposing trend where the 18 crosses down below the 40, this actually just goes and they meet up. And in that case, we don't really have a trend line to draw because it didn't make a lower low. It didn't do it didn't really give us an opportunity to draw on a trend line, but it did give us this higher pivot low. That's really the entry right here. Um, when this happens. So if we get the moving averages to come together, you look for a move up and then look for your first higher low. So here's a low and then we come up and we make a higher bottom. Um, and that trigger would happen on the daily chart right there, right around 65. So that's how I would be using these three time frames together. Um, but we can see the strength off the monthly. Um, now I would be telling you that we probably have room up towards um, 75 is the next target area. Um, it, it's getting a little overbought, so I don't think I'd want to be buying it now. Uh, look for a pullback closer to the 18 day. CNC. So CNC broke out, had a really nice follow through. And then look at this bar. Look at this decline right here. This big red bar here. And you can see the selling on the daily chart here. So I want to evaluate this because I, I'm, I'm a technical analyst, so I don't I don't try and look at, you know, fundamentals or anything like that. But I do like to look at news and I like to know why this happened. And if we take it, if you go and look at um, Humana, Humana got murdered on this day, on these two days, <clears throat> and it really got crushed. And so this stock was going down in sympathy with that. And I actually think looking at this, I'm very impressed with how well this held up. I mean, 75 is a big support area and it did hold that. So based on the strength of the decline, it's very possible this is going to consolidate. But I am encouraged. I think as long as it stays above 75, this is in pretty good shape. If it drops under 75, then you're in for probably a longer wait. But we have massive support on the monthly chart and an overall condition that is pretty bullish here. 
Um, I would, but I would be okay with buying, especially if this can consolidate a little bit more, working sideways in the near term. Okay, so this question on Texas Instruments, it came down to the 18-month line. We've got a zero line, on, so that, so there's the pullback on the 18-month here. Um, we've got a uh, pullback that has caused the 18 to cross down below the 40, but the eight, but we don't have the 18 below the 40 at this point. Now, look at this though. We have, while this is declining, we've now worked off the overbought condition. Notice how MACD was really extended above the zero line, and now it's worked all the way back down. So you can look at this as an overbought, oversold oscillator, and we've worked back down to neutral. And in an uptrend, neutral is sometimes all you get. Um, the other thing that we can see here is that we don't really have much selling strength whatsoever. We're, all three of these lines are below 25, so that's also encouraging to me. Now, the other thing I want to point out is that we undercut this bottom. So I can see it really clearly on the daily. Um, we had several lows that had taken place over the course of the last six to, 12, six to nine months, undercut that, and now we're getting a pretty sharp rally. So as you know, one of the patterns I like to look for is an undercut and rally, and that typically takes the form of a rally up and then a test back. Now, we don't have much reaction to MACD yet, so I'd like to see the MACD come up and actually pinch when we're getting that undercut pattern. And a lot of times it'll come back and test the support area. It doesn't have to come all the way back down to that breakdown low. Uh, but it, it, if we make a higher bottom near support, somewhere around 185, something like that, I would be pretty interested in that just based on the overall conditions here. Uh, Lucid. So another question on this. And the question was... Um, because one of the things that I have done and I have back tested was using two time frames together. I get a pullback on this time frame where the 18 is above the 40 and both lines are rising. And then on this time frame, I get an opposing trend. And then the trigger would be a close above the 40. That's this bar right here. And I back tested a 10 year back test. Performance was very, very good just using that, taking every single trade. And I did it on the queues. I did it on the. Uh, I did it on the uh, S&P, um, I did it on the monthly weekly combo, and I did it on the weekly daily combo. And all the numbers were really good doing that. The thing is, is though, when I look at the chart and I see this, I probably would not take this trade seeing it here, cross, uh, crossing and going one up. So you had a bottoming bar, up bar, another, well, kind of an inside bar, and then an up bar. So I've gotten a little, it's to me, this has gone too far before crossing the 18. So I would watch for the first little dip, first pullback closer to the 18 um, if I were gonna do this trade. There's nothing wrong with putting on the trade on this close, as I've mentioned, but the back test would use this as your stop. So you gotta give it some room. You gotta give it some room if you're gonna do that. The problem I've got with the reason why I would have waited is because I look at risk reward. Now I can see this was a violent sell off from this peak and if I'm buying here, and I know I probably only have room to about 50, uh, and I've got a risk down to here, the risk reward is skewed against me. So if I can get a pullback closer to the 18, now this trade actually could make some sense with a room up till here, up into this zone, and I can put a stop down in here. I, that, so that's how I would use the risk reward in my favor from that standpoint. Uh, BKNG. A little too violent of a reversal here. Look at this weekly bar after the breakout. Um, we came down and found support. I think we're going to form a range. I think this is going to be caught between here and here. Um, it doesn't look like it's going to be able to get through this on the first try. Um, we'd have to see some improvement in relative strength. The green DI has held its held up okay, but I don't. I'd like to see a little bit more confirmation just based on the violence of this sell-off here. Uh, let's go to CCL. So CCL is trying to make a bottom and it's trying to get back above the 18 month. So I talk about overrun in the MACD, but look at the overrun in the, in the 18 month line. See how we tried to hold the 18 month and we ended up overrunning it. And when that happens, then I'm, I'm, I'm less inclined to believe that it's going to go uh, dramatically above without coming back and testing. There's just not enough strength here. And believe me, this, this is all happening below the zero line 
on this long-term time frame. So it's it's a little bit questionable. I see this more as a trading play up towards 25, and then I think we'll probably have some resistance. Wait for a little bit more confirmation here. Let's look for a little bit more strength and then a better test of the 18 month before looking to play this. You'd have to be very nimble if you want to play this at this point. Uh, Cleveland Cliffs, um, steel stocks have definitely been showing some improvement. We do have the 18 and the 40 have come together. We have MACD coming back down to the zero line. Um, we do have a low ADX condition. These, all these intrigue me. The only thing that's missing, and one of the things I talk about in the zero line reversal patterns with low ADX is I want to be able to draw the trend line. Well, how do I draw a trend line here? I really can't do that. If I draw a trend line, I almost have to do that. I don't really have any other trend line I can draw because I'm not drawing this. That's not really a peak yet. Um, so if I've got to do that, um, I'd probably wait, as I mentioned earlier, wait for some kind of a higher pivot low to develop like this um, and then see if, uh, if you get a really good pivot to the downside, you can draw a trend line like that. That's how I'd go about doing that. Okay, well, that's it for today. Thanks for joining me. Uh, please send those stock requests to stocktalk at stockcharts.com. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Hey, guys, Dave Keller here with stockcharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.